because Elijah could be trusted. God does not call people because they spend hours in prayer. God does not call people because they know so much of the word. He calls people that he can trust. Always remember that. I don't think he, he kind of understood what I was talking about. Because if you left the church because you were not given an opportunity, because someone else gave you a title and said, hey, I'll make you a prophet or I'll make you a pastor or whatever, then you're not saved. You're not saved. Because if you're really a Christian, your heart is not like James and John here, looking for position, title, opportunity to preach. Want to tell everybody how anointed you are, how gifted you are? You're not saved. Because a real Christian, their heart is to serve people. That's a real Christianity, is to serve others, not to look for opportunities. Because remember what I shared on Thursday. When it's your time, God will always promote you. No one can stop it. No one can stop promotion from God. No one. But God does not expect you as a believer to market yourself. You know, in the corporate world, when you meet someone, let's just say you meet someone in, in senior authority, the first thing people do is they market themselves. Well, you know, I've been working in this business for so long, and it was my idea to do that thing there. And, and you know, because of me, my department is running so efficiently, and this is happening, that's happening. And you know, I've got this qualification, that qualification. What are you doing? You're marketing yourself. Why are you marketing yourself? Because you want that guy to recognize you so that you can get a promotion. In the kingdom, you don't market yourself because marketing yourself is going against God. Oh, yeah, no, you never heard that. So let me say it again. Well, you know, I'm so anointed. You know, I get dreams every time. God speaks to me all the time. To me. I have this dream. I have that dream. And this happened, this happened. You know, the other day I prayed and five people fell down. I laid hands and that person could heal. And you know, you know, the way God is using me, the way he's using me. And you know, I'm, I was ordained as this and I've got that title, that title. That's your problem. You want recognition. You want title. God's not interested in that. He's looking for a servant. He's looking for a real believer who will serve people. Amen. I know some of you don't like this now. Less amens. But this is real Christianity, the foundation of it. He's servanthood. He's servanthood. It's servanthood. You know, sometimes I hear people say, well, you know, I don't like that church. I, I, that's why I don't go to church. It's full of hypocrites. You know, I just stay at home and I pay my tithes. I'm praying all the time. I'm watching Christian television. I'm listening to the CDs. You're not saved. You know why? The church is Jesus Christ. The church is Jesus Christ. The Bible says, this is what he says. He says, he, he is the head and the church is his body. Everybody say, his body. So suppose I come and I pinch you on your head. You might not like it, right? You might get angry. But if I pinch you in your body, are you going to say it's okay? No, you say, don't touch my body. The church, whether it is leadership, whether it's the building, whether it's the fellowship, is Jesus Christ. So when you don't honor the church, you don't obey the church, you are actually not serving Jesus. You're backslidden. Because why? You can't say, I hate the church. I don't like that elder, that deacon, that pastor, that this, that, that, that. Don't like the worship, that, 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 that. Don't like all that, but I love Jesus. Are you trying to take a knife and cut him in half? I don't like that part of Jesus. I like that part of Jesus. No. The whole church is Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ. When you work in your local church, you're actually working for Jesus. Because the whole church is Jesus. You can't like part of him and you don't like the other part of him. Amen. Yes. Getting very few amens now. <laughs> Christianity is not about self-awareness. What does that mean? It's not about you. It's not about your reputation, your recognition. It's not about how gifted you are. Christianity is about you serving others. How we serve others. And that's what 
decides if we get promoted or not. Not how many years you were in Bible school. Not how many years you did this and how you did that and how you did this and how successful you were. None of that matters. It's how you serve that matters. That's the only thing that God looks for before you promote someone. Amen? So people don't get this. They don't understand this. They don't understand this. Let's say there's a, there's a, a, a department leader or, a, or, a, or an elder or a deacon or a cell leader, someone who says, hey, uh, we're going to paint the wall black inside the church. We're going to paint the wall section. And you decide that you don't have time for that because on the weekend, let's just say it's a Saturday. The guys say, hey, we're going to get together on a Saturday. But on a Saturday, you're busy playing soccer with your friends. Or you're playing cricket or whatever. Or maybe you're going to the movie with your friends. And you prefer the movie or you prefer the soccer to serving Jesus. Think about this. So you say, no, I can't make it. Why? Because my soccer, my friends are more important than serving Jesus. Because painting the church is actually serving Jesus. It's his church. Now, I know we don't think like this. Why? Because somehow religious Christianity, new age Christianity, has told us the kings in the church, major one. <laughs> the first lady. It's about all these things, yeah. It's not about what you do for Jesus. But this is where you are lied to. Because the whole church is Jesus Christ. If you dishonor the church, if you come, let's just say you come late and you park your car and then you fight with the car guard. You are dishonoring Jesus Christ. Because the church is Jesus Christ. Or if you come late and you bang on the door. You're dishonoring Jesus Christ. You shouldn't even come late to church. You should never be late at church. When you have a doctor's appointment, you have an operation, how many of you go late for the operation? How many of you go late to work? But Jesus Christ, we don't care about him. He must do what we want. You see, what does Jesus do when he meets believers like that? He walks away from them. There was a group of people, 5,000 that he fed. And then he left them, he walked away from them. And they said, why did you leave us? You know what he said? You only serve me because of what you can get from me. I'm not interested in that Christianity. You're not a disciple. Amen. Amen. So, if you follow Jesus because of what you can get from him, selfish needs, you missed your whole miracle. God, it doesn't turn God on. God is looking for someone who will serve. Whether you serve in, let's just say you're a businessman and you serve in building things in the kingdom or you're a worker in the kingdom. You serve in your local church. He's looking for servitude. He's looking for how we serve others. Look what Jesus says. But whosoever is great among you shall be your minister. How do you minister to other people? Whosoever shall be the chiefest, the number one, shall be a servant of all. Shall be a servant of all. Everybody say, a servant of all. But you see, this is where modern Christianity has missed it. Because when we go to church now, we have heroes in the church. Bill, that pastor is so anointed. Whoa, 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 we gotta go there. Or maybe after church, after church, after this message, you can't wait to get with your buddies. Hell, you know, I know more than what the pastor said. Because God's been speaking to me all the time. Oh, I studied this, I studied that. Let me dissect the word for you. Let me just take away the, the meat from the bones. You can't even work. You can't even be a servant in your local church, but you want to be an, a, a professor. You're not saved. How can you be a child of God? You don't serve. You don't serve. But you want to dictate and, and crucify that person, that person, but yet you don't do what Jesus says you must do. You must serve others in the kingdom of God. Amen. Getting quiet now. So why are these people 
showing how gifted they are, showing how much of the word they know, showing how they know what's really going on. Why? Because they are looking for recognition. They're looking for recognition. They want others to praise them and tell them, wow, you're so anointed. Wow, you're so gifted. And then they feel good inside. But Jesus, he just looks and laughs. That's not what I called you to do. And I'm not impressed by how gifted you are. I'm not impressed by how many people fell down when you prayed. I'm not impressed by what you can do. I'm impressed by the way you serve. That's what he says. I'm impressed by the way you serve. You say, but why are we talking about being a servant? Because if you don't understand this, you can never understand the miraculous. See, a lot of times people come to God because what can I get from Jesus? And if he doesn't give it to me, I'll try something else. You're wasting your time. Because when you turn your life to Jesus, you become a servant in the kingdom of God. Amen. So when people think, when they look for recognition, they look for titles, they want positions, they're still baby Christians because they're serving Jesus because of what recognition they can get. Amen. So let's take what I just said now in the last half an hour, what I just said, and take it back to what you've heard in the church. What you've heard in the church. Because the church is not preaching this. The church is saying, hey, if you do this, I'll give you a promotion, I'll give you a title. People are opening churches so that they can be recognized. They don't want to serve in the local church, but they want, the rep they want their own recognition. They want their own office, their own title. Because nobody wants to serve anymore. They all want their recognition. And that's false Christianity. That's not what the Bible has taught us. Amen. Woo! I know some of you may be upset with me right now. Maybe somebody promised you a promotion, a recognition. Maybe somebody said, hey, I'll make you a bishop, archbishop. I'll make you a, you know, you go to Africa. You know how common this problem is in Africa? Go to Africa. Every person in Africa is a bishop. If they're not a bishop, they're an apostle. If they're not an apostle, they're a prophet. There is no place, there is no pastor. It's so hard to find a pastor. You can't find a pastor. Why? Because they're a bishop, apostle, da, 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 da. And if you don't recognize my office, I'll get angry with you. You're called to serve. You're called to serve. You're called to serve. The bigger your title, the more you serve. The things you do is because God called you to serve. If your local church needed you at 5 a.m., you should be there at 5 a.m. Why? Because it's Jesus that needs you at 5 a.m. It's Jesus. The church is his place. So I'm talking generally here. I'm not just talking. You may think, hey, this guy's talking about his church. No, no, no. I'm talking generally. Why? Because this is a chronic problem in the body of Christ. Chronic problem. We are looking for titles and positions. We are looking for recognition. Well, you know, I've been in this church for so many years. They've never once let me do the offering. They never once let me preach. What's wrong with me? You know the way I preach. Man, I am on fire. Love, am I not on fire? Yes, I'm on fire. Come on. You're not saved. You're not even a Christian. Because if you really are saved, you, the first thing you say is, not me being seen, but Jesus. If you ask me to set the chairs, I'll set the chairs. You ask me to sweep the floor, I'll sweep the floor. You ask me to clean the place, I'll clean the place. You ask me to go and visit someone, pray for them, even if I don't have a car, I'll walk and go there. You will say to me, you need me 24 hours a day, I am here 24 hours a day. Why? Because I am called to serve. I didn't come to get served. I came to serve. If you are born again, you're called to serve. You don't need to have any position. No position. You're called to serve Jesus. Amen? So there's various ways you can serve. You don't have to be, every single person doesn't have to be a worker in the church, but you're called to serve. You're not called to be an expert on Christianity. You're not called 
to be a professor in Christianity. No one cares about your assumptions. We want to hear what Jesus has to say. Call to serve him. Amen. Let's get our stuff right. So, how does Jesus respond to people seeking recognition and position? How does Jesus respond? Let's read. This is John 13, verses 4 to 7. He raised from supper. This is the last supper. Uh, he laid aside his garments. He took a towel. And he girded himself. He put the towel around his waist. And then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. Imagine washing someone's stinky feet. They didn't have all the feet perfect. I don't know if they had the feet perfect. I don't think so. Then, after he washes the feet, he starts to wipe the feet with the towel that was around his waist. And then Simon Peter came to him and said, and Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? You're washing my feet, Jesus. You're the master. You're the bishop. And you're washing my feet. And, and Peter, in fact, later on, Peter says, why don't you give me a full bath? Because he couldn't understand what Jesus was saying. And Jesus said to him, what I do, you don't understand now. But you will understand later. Let me read it again. What I do, thou knowest not now. But you will know, you will understand what I'm doing later. And then later comes and he explains it in verse number 12. So after he had washed their feet and taken their garments, he washed all 12 of them, all 12 of their feet. And he took their garments and was set down again. He said to them, know you what I have done to you. You call me master. You call me apostle. You call me prophet. You call me bishop and Lord. And yes, I am that you say well, for I am. And if I then, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done, that you should do as I have done. Verily, verily, I say to you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you that do them. What was he doing? He was saying, now you know, some people get this wrong. So they have a feet washing ceremony at church. I don't like washing people's feet at church. Miss my carpets. <laughs> but then what did Jesus do? He said, you don't understand what I'm doing. Then he says, let me explain. I have a title. I have a position. I am Lord. I am master. And if me, as your Lord and master, are washing your feet, you then should serve others with such humility. That's what he's saying. Hell, hell. They want me to set the chairs. Huh. Don't they know who I am? I'm the biggest type payer here. I don't set people's chairs. And that's why you can't have a breakthrough. That's why you can't have a breakthrough. Because you you're not a servant, you don't serve. The apostles were leaders, yet their primary function was to be servants. You know, sometimes I ask this question, even in my own church, and I see this in other churches, I ask my own church, how many leaders will, will do this? They'll even ask their two ICs to go wash other people's feet, but they won't wash it. Why? Because they're not servants. They don't serve. And if they don't serve, they don't have the heart of Christ. And if they don't have the heart of Christ, promotion cannot come. Promotion can't come. It's nice to go to church, nice to sit every Sunday and listen to a message. But until you become like Christ, God doesn't lift us up and promote us. No promotion comes until you're a servant, until you're first serving. 
You know, Pastor Jessie is an ex excellent example of being a servant. And you know, she hates titles. I said to her, I'm going to call you first lady. She said, never. I will throttle you while you're sleeping. No, I shouldn't say that. I'm just paraphrasing. Right, but she hates the titles. She hates them. She she's a, you know, I've never met anyone that serves the way she serves. She will work and work and work. You know, in our old church, before we came to this building, we needed to uh, uh, clean the place up. We had done a lot of work there. And she got on her knees. And for hours, and I know Pastor Loretta came and helped her as well. For hours, these two ladies were scrubbing the floors. They didn't want to bother anyone else. They said they will do it. Because that's how they work. They don't care that they are pastors and they've got just titles. They will work and work and work. They don't have a problem going on their knees. I mean, others will say, well, I'll send my maid. No, she will go on her knees and she'll work. That's the way she's always been. She does it at home. She's like that. She's, a, she's someone who just serves and serves and serves in the kingdom. And when you serve in the kingdom, God favors you. God lifts you up. But how do you serve? Amen? Well, I'll serve by being the supervisor. You are not saved. There's no supervisors in the kingdom of God. There are only people that work for Jesus. No supervisors. Amen. <laughs> so Elijah, Elijah was a servant. Therefore, he was ready for his miracle. Everybody say he was a servant. Therefore, miracles were easy. Oh, I've never heard that before. You see what the modern church teaches, and this is wrong again, a wrong doctrine. The modern church teaches that if you want to be holy, if you want God to use you, you want to be anointed, you must spend days fasting, praying, studying the word. Then God will raise you up. He'll anoint you because of the amount of prayer. So you don't go, you're not a servant, but you're locked up in the closet, caught in the third heaven, and you have no use on earth. You're so heavenly bound, you have no earthly use. Now, that is not true, by the way. It's not true. If that was true, every person that came out of Bible school would be more anointed than the people not in Bible school. If that was true, every person who is a prayer warrior will be greatly anointed and have authority over demons more than people who don't pray that much. If that was true, then the psalmist and the worship people will walk with great power and authority. And you know that's not true. It is not how many hours you pray or how much of the word you know, because you can know the Bible from cover to cover. It still doesn't mean you'll go to heaven until you learn to apply the word. You know what Jesus said? He says, what benefit is it if you know all the scriptures? What benefit is it if you, uh, you are so educated in the word of God, you've got so much of experience? I'm not interested in what you know. I'm looking for someone who is a doer of the word. Do it. So, if you want to walk in the supernatural, you want to walk in the supernatural, it's not how much you know or do, or how closet Christian you are, how much time you're soaking and soaking and soaking. I tell people, the more you soak, the more wet you get. Then I'm soaking music. Oh, soaking music. Oh, soaking, soaking, soaking. Get up and serve, and the gift will make room for you. That is what promotes people. It's how hard they work in the kingdom, not how they want to self-edify and build themselves up. Amen. Mm, mm, mm. It's so very quiet here. So watch this. Elisha, he is serving. He's pouring water in the hands of Elijah. He's serving. He is not going to school of the prophets to learn how to prophesy. Think about what I'm saying. There's no record of him spending hours and hours in prayer 
Besides, he wouldn't be doing it because he's serving Elijah. Imagine you say, Elijah, I need my supper. Sorry, I'm praying. He's not spending hours and hours in intercession. You know what he's doing? He is serving. And the Bible says if God finds you faithful in little, He will promote you because promotion only comes from the Lord. I know you've never heard a message like this because you were taught how, how, how the circular Christianity works. It's about title, it's about position, it's about recognition, and the more you do this, the more I'll recognize your gifting. That people have been lying to you. They've been lying to you. It's not what Jesus teaches. He doesn't care what title you have. Well, you know, you know when God calls me, he doesn't say, Dr. Silver. He doesn't say, Apostle Silver. And you know, I'm an ordained bishop. He doesn't say, Bishop Silver. He doesn't even say, Pastor Silver. He says, he only uses two words when he speaks to me. He either calls me son or he calls me boy. That's only two words he uses. But you see, if I am insecure, now you know I've got several titles, right? But if I'm insecure, my title, and when they put it on television, and especially here in the front, I'll put it, Bishop, Apostle, Doctor, Sava, Modeling, PhD. <laughs> Why? And if you come to my house, I'll have all my certificates on the wall. So when you walk in, you see, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> like when you go to the doctor's surgery, woo, woo, you did that? My doctor the other day, he did some thing on snakes. Oh, you got that qualification. I don't need anyone to recognize me. As long as he recognizes me because of how I serve. He promotes me. He promotes me. He will promote you because he sees how you serve. He sees your heart in how you serve. And if you're someone that can show God that you serve, let me tell you something. Anything you pray for, you see it happen. Because you're serving. Because you serve. Because you serve. And so here, this man that didn't go and get all the accolades, he didn't get all the titles, he just poured water. He served in his local ministry, his local church. He poured water in the hands of Elijah. Guess what happened to him? There comes a time for him now to have his miracle, his breakthrough, because he serves. No one, God will never let anyone serve without reward.